Hi, I'm Barry. And I'm Sharon. And welcome, welcome to the guest, to the guest house. house. <laughs> what do you want to talk about today? Life. Life. That could be a really long video. Our last trip, maybe. Yeah, let's do that. So we went to the Poconos. Very cool place. We oh. stayed at a really cute campground. It was called Stony Brook. Yes. Um, it was just under $50 a day. Yeah. So not expensive. And um, really nice. It was a mix of, of well, I guess, what they call transit and... Um, seasonal. 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 Campers. Something we just learned about was the whole seasonal camping. I had no idea that existed, but we'll probably talk about that some other time. Yeah, it was probably about two thirds of the sites were seasonal. Were seasonal. Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. there are pros to that, that I found. Yeah. Yeah, the people who were seasonal really kept their sites beautiful. They put decks in front of their um, campers. Was friendly. People were really friendly. It was like their neighborhood, and so they were taking <laughs> it care was of it. The neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, it was really neat. Yeah. So, arrival. Pretty easy. It was easy to find. Easy to find, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, no yeah. major issues with the roads getting mm -hmm. there. Uh -uh. No. Um, I went in to check in because during the pandemic, um, there's you never know what you're gonna find, and um, uh, you check in at the shop, and uh, the gal at the counter. Uh, I made a joke that we were new, and she oh, we are. she said, and I said, give us a really easy site to back into, and, and she, like, laughed, ha-ha, you know, no worries that if we needed help, she would just send around her husband. <laughs> and uh, so when we did get into the site, he drove by in his golf cart and asked if we were okay, and it was, it was really friendly. nice. Very friendly. I mean... Yeah. The sites were super easy to park in, to back yeah, in. Yeah, really easy, And no we problems. literally backed in, and he came by in his golf cart and said, you need help? Yeah. Really so. good, decent-sized sites. Um, no issues. Very nice level, level, solidly compact gravel sites. It's a beautiful area. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So um, the utilities at the site, new, functional, perfect. No Cable, problems. Cable, full hookups. The boxes were nice, the electrical boxes, they mm -hmm. weren't all nasty and rusted. And no, not, they looked, everything looked fairly new, like yeah. recent, um, well recently kept. Um, yeah. kept. So um, so that was great. So uh, we stayed there for three nights. Mm -hmm. And while we were there, we figured we would just go and take a peek at the Appalachian Trail. Um, the Appalachian Trail runs through that corner of Pennsylvania. Um, and um, we went to a parking lot that was about two miles away from the campground. We went to Bake Oven Knob um, parking area. There's two parking areas on either side of the road. One parking area, you hit the, the trail going north, and right. the other parking area hit the trail going south. So we parked in the parking area to hit the trail going south. Um, there's some amazing vistas. Uh, what was one of the things that we we're thinking about as we were walking along the trail in our sneakers. We were not prepared. No. We brought tennis shoes this time. Yeah, we didn't. We brought, well, and that was tennis shoes to the Iowa and running shoes to everyone else. So, <laughs> yeah, we, home tennis shoes. We, we wore our running shoes. And uh, yeah, there's a big difference. I think you like, you should wear the right shoes for the. That was a lesson activity. learned for us. We're yeah. going to pack a separate separate bag of just hiking gear yeah. and always keep it with us. Yeah, because we love hiking. I mean, yeah. it's like one of the best things to do when you get out away from the city is to go out on the trails and um, little uh, rock climbing never stopped us uh, until we came up to the rocks and realized that our running shoes were A, too I did slippery, not feel safe. there's no grip, and um, you can't lace those things tight enough to keep them on your feet. Yeah. Um, so. But how many miles did we walk? No, it was about five miles. Five miles? miles? Yeah. yeah, it was about it was five miles. Walk. It was pretty hot. It's pretty hot. It was all uphill one way. So, um, yeah, right. But then it was all downhill going back. Um, so one of the things that um, I thought was really funny is at the trailhead, there would be signs. Basically things like... Um, don't leave trash, don't litter, et cetera, et cetera. But one of the signs said, um, paint is prohibited. And I think both of us were thinking, well, that's the funniest sign. Like, why would you, Yeah. 
what? Until we got up to some of these amazing vistas, and you'll see in the pictures, um, the the rock everything was like full of graffiti. All the rocks were full of graffiti. Um, some of it some was of so was fresh. fresh, it was like wet and slippery and sticky. Um, and I, it was just, it was so sad because it's such a beautiful place. These trails are so beautiful. The trails are so beautiful, the vistas are so beautiful, and then all of the rock is full of graffiti. I mean, like covered, you couldn't see the rock. So anyway, so Sunday, 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 Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> we went on a winery tour. That was fun. It was great. Um, it was we a beautiful went, day, it was, beautiful weather. It was an amazing day. The humidity was down, the sun was shining, it wasn't too hot. I mean, it was a really, really wonderful day. Um, we went to three wineries, and um, in Pennsylvania, the rules right now are um, you have to buy a meal. And so at each of the three wineries, the meal was defined slightly differently. So we went to Gallon Glen, and Gallon Glen was actually a vineyard and a winery, beautiful. all on the same property. That was beautiful. Beautiful, as you can see. And um, they defined a meal as uh, they had some choices. They had cheese, cheese sample plate. They had, you know, crudite, I think. And then they had um, salted chocolate, salted caramel chocolates that were locally made. Good. And of course, so we chose those. And uh, so we had a glass of wine. We enjoyed the view. It was really wonderful. Well, so just to back up just a little bit, mm -hmm. we did not know that to go on these wine tasting tours that you had to eat a meal no so we had breakfast before Giant we left breakfast. what did we have that day we had like um pancakes and uh, strawberries uh, and bacon we were and full already we were stuffed so just so, throwing that out there because we were thinking we just want to be prepared because we're going to be filling our bellies full of wine yeah so you know i mean we were we thought we were being smart apparently we were not anyway um so the next one we went to so gallon glen was out in the countryside it was like rolling hills really beautiful the next one we went to was radical uh um winery and radical was sort of just outside of um jim thorpe um and um it was more like a tasting room kind of place um we did a flight yeah. we each did a flight of five different wines and mm -hmm. they have some very interesting so they have some traditional you know wines but then they have some really interesting f other fruit wines like i did a peach well and i did that one that was bubble gum flavored <laughs> Um, yeah, it was very weird. Hey. Yeah. It was like, why not? Yeah, try different stuff. Why not? And it was kind of weird and kind of funny. The, yeah. they, the meal choice, uh, the meals that they were serving was breakfast. So um, we bought a yoo and a box of Frosted Cheerios. Cheerios, the little mini boxes. That, of um, I think we still have them. <laughs> it's very funny. Um and because they said, look, you know, a meal was not really defined legally, like what is a meal? And so for a dollar each, we got a Yoohoo and a... So that was kind of fun. That was nice. And they had wine flavored ice cream. Oh, we had the wine flavored ice cream. That was really good. It was actually ice cream made with wine. Mm -hmm. Ours, uh, what we tried was the Chardonnay and a Cabernet twist. So the Chardonnay vanilla ice cream and the Cabernet chocolate ice cream twist. I think if, if you told me there was, if you didn't tell me there was wine in there, I probably wouldn't have noticed. No, you wouldn't have, but it gave it a really good it flavor. Was really, it was really, really good. very good ice cream. They had slushies. They had all kinds of really fun yeah. stuff. Um, it was a cool place. So, yeah, that was Enjoy. pretty cool. So the third one that we went to in the last winery that we went to was called Big Creek Vineyard and Winery. And they had a couple locations. We went to their location in downtown Jim Thorpe mm -hmm. in an old mercantile building. Very cool building. Yeah. Um, their meal was a cheese plate, which was delightful. Mm -hmm. So we kind of sat and we had some wine and we had some cheese and that was fun. And we thought, well, since we're in Jim Thorpe, 
why don't we just walk around? I had never heard of Jim Thorpe. Didn't know it existed. Yeah. Super cute town. Um, very tiny, so really just one street through town, and then up at the top of the hill, there's a mansion. But Jim Thorpe was really, really cool. There was um, um, the mansion at the top of the hill. Yeah, <laughs> walk. it was a steep walk. <laughs> we, keep in mind, we'd been walking and doing a lot of stuff all day, so we were tired. And it had we gotten, looked up the hill and went mm. like the weather was beautiful just to sit. And yeah. look out at the vistas at the wineries. But once you started walking around. Yeah. Yeah. It got pretty hot. Yeah. So that was a really cool mansion. Um, Asa Packer was the um, original owner of this mansion. Earned all of his money via like railroad. Railroads. He was a railroad yeah. magnet. And um, apparently he also was one of the founders of Lehigh University, which is a Pennsylvania University. So that was pretty cool. So as we're walking along town, there are lots of little restaurants and little oh. bars and little yeah. shops. And we walked past this one place and the waitress was bringing out, they had a couple of tables outside and the waitress was bringing out this enormous plate of like double cooked loaded fries. And there was a plate of the little mini tacos that just oh, yeah, so good. Yeah. And this guy is like, wow, that looks so great. And it, it smelled, smelled really so good. good. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> um, so instead of going back to the campsite and having dinner, we decided that <clears throat> why not just stop in and see what they have. And, yeah. um, it is um, called Notch 8 Craft House. Um, awesome place. The What did you think of the selection of beverages? Well, they had a big blackboard just filled with different mm -hmm. types of beers and stuff. And I'm like, it was a big selection. It's hard to it was, choose. It was overwhelming. It was hard to choose. I think we both stared at it for a few minutes. What did we get? You remember what we had to eat? Sliders. Yeah. And what was that salad? It was a smoked Caesar salad. It was a Caesar massive salad. Salad. So good. It was kale. Kale. So the primary... Green was kale. Yeah. Um, and like they did like this massage kale, which apparently that makes it easier to eat. But um, it had like comfy garlic and um, oh my gosh, there was so much good stuff. So, so good. go to their Facebook page and you get to see pictures of all of this yeah. stuff. And we'll put the links to all the places that we went and to Notch 8. Um, hit them up on Instagram. They, it, it's totally worth the visit. Jim Thorpe was really cute. That <coughs> was really worth the visit. Yeah, it was. Um, what are your final impressions? Would you go back? Uh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. for us, it was a uh, just over a two-hour drive. Yeah. It wasn't bad at all. Super easy drive. Um, back yeah. roads, country driving. Mm -hmm. Nice place. People super friendly. Yep. Um, I think also, like, if you're looking for various amenities, they had a basketball court, pickleball court, they had a pool. Um, yeah, it's and, all, like, brand um, new. They have this huge patio where they normally do all kinds of activities and things. There's, It's a little weird this summer. I think it's pretty weird everywhere. Um, yeah. But I think under ordinary circumstances, they have lots of activities. They have themed weekends. Um the surrounding mm -hmm. area is totally worth seeing, uh, lots of fun, and I think we had a really good time, and we would recommend that you check them out and check out Jim Thorpe and check out the wineries that we're putting the links to. Check out um, Notch 8. Everything. Just check it out. <laughs> and hopefully the Asa Packer Museum will open um, up again for tours because um, yeah. all of the reviews, we didn't get to see it because it was closed, but all the reviews say that it's really kind of like – um, a snapshot in time because they basically left it exactly the way it was um, when the Packers um, departed. Uh, anyway, anything else? We covered it all. I think so. And then some. Sorry, I was a little chatty. It's okay. <laughs> it's kind of the way I am. Anyway, so if you like this video and you want to see more videos, please subscribe. We would really love that. And we would be so thankful. And mm -hmm. um, give us a thumbs up um, or a thumbs down, but hopefully a Preferably thumbs up. Thumbs. <laughs> thumbs up. 
and um, hit that bell because then you can get notifications of um, future videos. Nice. Right. Okay. And then one last thing. What? Thanks for being our guest. Yep. See you guys. Bye. Bye.